Tremont finally wins one in 2017. Things get a little bit wild and crazy at the great race place. Quick time starts now. To Albany, Saratoga Speedway, we go with the King of Dirt Pro Stock Clash. Leading things off, 30 laps the distance. Round number one on the series is Jeff Washburn would be your early race leader in the event as he'd work him up into turn number one and two. Early caution going to take place in this one, though, as the four of Dean Charbonneau going to go around just past the implement tire as that would bring yellow out onto the speedway in Charbonneau's first race back in 2017. Off the restart, Jeff Washburn and Dave DePaulo were putting on a great battle as John Ruthier right there as well as Brandon Amy, currently your race leader in this one as three wide battle between these three coming down the front straightaway as Washburn looking to take advantage on the outside lane. This will continue though as now Cousin Luke Horning works it up on the top side as that happens. Jay Casey tries to go to the inside lane and clips the implement tire on the inside lane and that would bring out the yellow. Take a look at this battle. Six cars fighting for position down the back stretch. Amy, your leader. Here's Horning up top. Then Yetman going to get in there. Kenny Martin working the inside lane. DePaulo right there as well as what a battle it was as Yetman and Speed come together, coming down the front straight away. They continue to work it up through turn number one and two as they would take advantage of this one. Amy right there with the race lead down the back straight away. But then Kenny Martin off a restart would take advantage as he works his way to the inside and be your new race leader heading down the front stretch. Three wide battle for the number two spot now as cars would work their way up into turn number three and four as Yetman trying one thing to get by speed on the outside but couldn't do it as Brandon Amy continues to fight on the inside here as they come to the white flag but in this one Kenny Martin way out in the front of this one looking for his first career KOD win and he would get it as the 93 would go to victory lane. Sportsman feature event would see Chris Ronka up on the inside lane as they bring him to the green flag down the front straightaway for this 25 lap feature event. As they work their way down the back stretch, so David Schilling would have a hot shoe early in that 1 800 got John Carter with 20 machine. He'd work his way up on the outside lane and be your new race leader up off a of turn number four as he would battle with Ronka for a split second, but then go to the front as Dave Constantino trying to work his way up behind him and he would be nose to tail with him for the majority of this event as Constantino hounded him like a rabid dog up through the corner and as they head through lap traffic a little bit of trouble down the back stretch of a bobble by Schilling and Constantino with a little bit of a fender rub working his way to the inside lane and when that seven gets out in front there's no stopping him as Dave Constantino touches up a little bit down the front stretch but he would take the lead away which is a handful of laps to go and Dave Constantino the man with a thousand faces going to have it out right down the back straightaway and he would hold on to pick up his first win to 2017 down at the great race place. To the modified feature we go, Demetrius Drello is going to lead the field of the green on the inside lane as he would be your early front runner in this feature event. But the car on the move was the 22 of Jeremy Wilder. Look at him work up on the outside as he would get by Rich Rocca down the back straightaway and into turn number three and four. Then go to work on Elmo Reckner, switch lanes to go underneath Demetrius Drello is looking for the race lead. And he would take that away and switch back up to the preferred top line working his way up on the outside lane. Meanwhile, the 87 of Neil Stratton off a restart trying to make something happen, but no dice on that one as the 22 of Wilder works his way down the back stretch, and then it'll be a crossover move by Stratton to try to slide up in front of him, but Wilder just too strong on the inside, and Stratton would lose second to Mark Johnson in that as well as the caution will come out for Don Rocca and Jesse Mueller. 
That would set up a restart, giving the defending champ a line on the inside lane to try to take advantage. He would take the lead for a split second, but Wilder would go back up to the top and blow the doors off the 3J coming off by turn number two as he would be your new race leader heading into turn number three and four once again. Matty D trying to make it close on the outside lane, looking for that number two spot between him and Mark Johnson, but Jeremy Wilder, the driver on a Ford plane, picks up his first career win at Albany, Saratoga by grabbing the victory. Johnson holding on for second. DiLorenzo coming across the line in spot number three. The J.C. Flack Memorial at the Valley of Speed as the Flack Crane and Rigging 77J comes down the front straightaway once again, but it would be Robbie Pitcher out on the front for this J.C. Flack Memorial as he would take the early race lead in the DealsOnWheels.com car number 17 machine as they work him up into turn number one and two for the first time. Cars get together coming down to turn number one and two as they head to the outside wall as Matt Papello gets in there along with Chad Jessio and the one of Denny Soltis as that would bring Yellow out onto the speedway and a lot of damaged race cars. You see Jessio with a lot of fender damage on the right side of the machine. Off the restart, Brett Hearn starting to hound some drivers down as he looks to go to the inside of Olden Dwyer for position, working it up on the inside lane as he... Brings it up through the east end of the speedway. Hearn trying to take that position. He would pick up a few more as Keith Flack looks to hold off J.R. Hefner for a position down the front straightaway as well by about three car lengths or so. But now the battle for the lead starting to shape up as Kyle Sheldon starting to run down the 17. A pitcher down into the west end of the speedway as pitcher continues to run on the high side. They work their way up off a turn number four this time. Coming to the checkers as for the first time since 2012, Robbie Pitcher going to victory lane in the J.C. Flack Memorial. Small block modified feature event working it down the front stretch early. Sean Mandel and Allen Hotailing would lead the field to the green. Hotailing tried to pull the electric slide job up off a of turn number two. Mandel and him touch coming down the back stretch, and that thing sends things a little bit haywire down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, here Kenny Tremont and Frank Harper working their way up through the field as they bring them off a of turn number four, trying to chase down the front runners in the early going. And now here comes Ray Hall Jr. working his way to the inside for the race lead on Hotailing up through turn number three and four. As that happens, high speed crash down the back straightaway. Kim Lavoy involved. Kim McGuire in there as well, along with Sean Mandel, as that would bring Yellow out onto the speedway after a hard wreck down that very fast Lebanon back straightaway. Off of the restart hall with another shot at Hotel Link down on the inside lane as the 72 looking to make it stick as they head into the west end. They were dead even that time, but here comes Kenny Tremont working his way up off a of turn number four right behind him as at the line hall would be your race leader. He knows that ahead, but he's got a lot of experience coming behind him as they work their way up through turn number four as Tremont trying to take control on the inside lane. As Hall would pull away, it would be the 115 getting past the 250 of hotailing for the number two spot as they worked it into the west end. Here's Tremont trying to battle back on the inside as they bring him off a turn number four, and it wouldn't be long until the 72 of Hall would block the inside. Tremont says, all right, buddy, I'm going up top. As the 115 powers off a turn number four, he would be your new race leader as they bring him down the front straightaway with just a few to go. Tremont now working his way through as Allen Hotailing going to go around up in turn number two. Brian Sandstead just narrowly missing a bump off the corner as that brings Yellow out onto the speedway once again. But you weren't stopping the 115. You know how it goes in small block competition. As he picks up his first win in 2017, second will be Ray Hall coming across the line. Brett Haas, 18th to third coming across the line. And that one, a great run for Brett the Threat. The driver out of Pittsfield as he picks up the finish. Pro Stock feature event is Dan Cody going to lead the field to the green as they work their way down the front straightaway. And one of the most exciting features of the night, working them up through the corner, Richie Crane racing no time, going to the inside lane off the end. Turn number three and four, as you'll see him work to the inside lane up off the corner. Him and Cody going to touch a little bit. Cody gets together with another car coming down the front stretch, and that sends things a little bit haywire coming down the front stretch. Corbin involved, Getman involved, La Rochelle involved, Hoffman involved. A number of cars, well, pretty much just about everybody that was running behind him involved as they work their way down the front straightaway here once again. Off the restart, Stephen La Rochelle up in that number two spot. Keep an eye on Robbie Getman, though, as he... Powers his way up into the top five past Chuck Towsley for position up off a of turn number two as Jay Casey's there as well. But, hey, Rich Crane way out in front of this one going to take home a big win in that 7-11 machine as he wins the Pro Stock feature, which was the nightcap on Saturday night. Jared, you're the defending champion in the Patriot Sprint Tour. What's it going to take to get another championship this season? Uh, it just takes consistency, uh, staying out of trouble, um, you know, knowing when to save your equipment and things like that, and 
you know, it, it may also take about 12 years of experience, which is where we're at now. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time now and uh, have been experiencing some pretty good success over the last few years, but it took a long time to get there. Uh, so we're still trying to figure out these central New York tracks, uh, trying to get, you know, a little bit faster when it gets slick on them and uh, learning what we can, you know. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much what I think it takes. You do a lot of traveling with the Patriot Sprint Tour. What's it mean to come to a track like Fonda Speedway with such a history? Uh, it means quite a bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to, I haven't got a chance to get over to the museum or anything, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, modified history and, uh, you know, a lot of big names uh, that come through here. And it's pretty neat to be able to race on the same racetrack. You know, the same thing can be said, you know, going down to, you know, Lernerville and uh, some of those other places where, you know, a lot of the outlaws have raced on, Steve Kinzer and Swindell and all them. So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Speaking of Lernerville, you raced there last night, made the long haul here. How, how hard is it with all the travel and the hours on the road? Eh, when you got a family, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, uh, it does take a lot of time away uh, from that, uh, which, you know, we, got, we did upgrade to a toter this year, so in hopes that we can uh, uh, get, you know, the family to come a little bit more. It makes it a little bit easier with young ones, so... Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Uh, but, of course, I don't do all the driving of the rig. Uh, you know, I leave that to my dad and, and Tony and uh, a couple other people. But uh, it's, it, can, it can get exhausting, I can tell you that. What would you and your team consider a successful 2017 season? Uh, we'd like to get up, you know, into the double-digit wins, uh, have 10, 10 or more wins. Uh, it's tough to do because... You know, uh, we race maybe about 30, 35 times. So, yeah, that's a pretty good winning percentage. It's tough, but it can be done. And, you know, the championship, we, I think we're going to try for it again this year. We're sitting pretty good right now uh, in the American points with the Patriots. So, um, you know, I think, uh, and as far as tonight, you know, I think we're trying to look to get a top five tonight. Down to the Ulster County Bull Ring we go. Sportsman Action versus Milton Mann and Raphael Carson going to lead the field to the green as Mann going to get the jump off of turn number two. Kyle Rohner going to have some trouble in the early going as he's going to get sent around in turn number three and four as that would bring yellow out onto the speedway. Keep that in mind, folks. Off the restart, you're going to see Raphael Carson right there, but here's Corey Cormier up on the outside lane looking to make something happen as he's there with Milton Mann as well on the inside. Milton Mann working hard on that number one machine on the inside as Carson not giving up the spot, however. Cormier now to the inside lane as they would dispatch a Carson, and now it would be Cormier and Mann going for the battle with Tony Kowalchuk right behind him as Yellow comes out onto the speedway again. Off the restart, cars will go around as Fatopoulos spins. Carson nowhere to go. Robbie Knight gets tagged up in it as well as that brings Yellow out onto the speedway one more time. And off of that restart, it would be Cormier now having to deal with Kyle Rohner who had to come all the way back. Rohner with a couple last shots at him, but not going to happen as Cormier just too strong on that outside lane as he would pick up the victory in the Sportsman Feature event. Richie Urich going to lead the modified feature to the green flag as they'll bring him down the front straight away in that number 10 machine. He would look to see pressure early on the outside lane as Rich Smith tries to battle him. And Jimmy Wells with some trouble though down the front straight away in the 831 as he goes around down the front straight away. Off the restart, Smith looking to take control on the outside from Urich. He does down the back straight as that number 16 R machine working it down on the top. Here's Urich trying to battle back off the corner though and doesn't have it as now we got a battle for second as Brad Roadhop going to get involved in this as well as he takes that neon machine down to the inside lane and takes the number two spot away trying to chase down your race leader. He would chase down the 16 of Rich Smith up off of turn number four and take the lead away down the front straight but Smith going to try to battle back as he would dance off the cushion bringing him around off of turn number three and four looking to get back by him. He would as Yellow will come out as Urich goes around and Dockenhausen involved Tyler Tracy in there as well as Caution will come out onto the speedway once again. A tough break as the cars look to work their way back around as Richard Smith's still going to be your race leader off of this one. And when they come back to it with the final two laps, Showtime, Danny Tyler now going to move into the number two spot, trying to make it Showtime down off of turn number two. But Smith just too strong as he rolls down through turn number three and four for the final time as Tyler takes one last shot. But it would go to Smith, who picks up the win, as Tyler would have to settle for second. 
Rookie Sportsman is going to get things started down for us on the hard clay as it would be Dylan Smith leading the field to the green as you can see a healthy field of sportsmen coming up here at Orange County Fair Speedway as Smith would take the early advantage taking not Take a look at Bobby Flood working on the inside lane, looking for the number two spot. Meanwhile, Jamie Doolin going to get sent around up in turn number two in the 50 machine. He'll back up against the concrete, and that's going to bring Yellow out onto the speedway here once again. Then off of the restart, things get a little crazy off of this one. As Smith continues to lead, he got Flood still looking for second. Car gets out of shape coming down the front straightaway, and, well, that's not the worst of it. As they work up their way into turn number one and two, Jeff Hyham did not have the night he was looking for. As you can see, there's the nine car that spun. There's Hyham's car. Not good. A tough break. There's a lot of amber on the speedway after that red flag. Off the restart, here comes the 91 of Flood looking to make this interesting. Looking to take the number two spot away and try to chase down Smith for the win as they come off a of turn number three and four. But Smith way out in front of this one as he picks up the rookie sportsman feature event. To the Sportsman feature we go. Second generation driver here in this one. Matt Schultz going to lead him to the green or not. As we got, as Lee Bryce would call, a parking lot party. Down on the front straightaway. Fotopoulos in there in the 555. Number of other cars involved. Chris Curtis as well. As Schultz for pre-take over the lead is he's got Billy Eggers right there with him looking to try to take that lead away as they bring him up down into turn number one and two once again. As the field tries to get through clean and green this time down off of turn number two and they do down the back straightaway. Schultz continues to lead but cars get together again as Curtis goes around and a number of cars also involved as well as that brings out the caution once again as Matt Schultz will hold on to this one in that 24 machine to pick up the victory in the regular sportsman feature event. To the modifieds we go. C.G. Mori up on the outside. Tom Heinley going to take the early race lead in this one, though, as they work their way up through the corner. As caution will come out for the 14 C.G. up in between turn number three and four. As the Pittsburgh Vermont native having a little bit of trouble, John Ferrier going to blow the doors off the 17 machine coming down the front straightaway as your new race leader would be Ferrier up into turn number one and two. Gary Edwards looking to follow on the inside. Jimmy Spellman in there as well trying to make moves down off of turn number two as they fight down the back straightaway as Jerry Higby in there as well. Keep an eye now on the 21 of Edwards. He looks to go around Hindley on the inside lane trying to make something stick off of turn number three and four this time as they come down the front straightaway. Hindley going to hold on though for that position but no stopping Ferrier as the 220 way out in front of this one as he picks up his fifth career win down on the hard clay in modified competition. Twin 20s for the Pro Stocks at the Fonda Speedway as it would be Randy Kosselman leading the first one up into turn number one and two with the race lead for the first time. Some great battles going on behind him as Cousin Luke Horning knock, knock, knocking on the door. Can't you hear me knocking? Rolling Stone style up through turn number two as he would work his way on the inside lane. It looks like the 5C gets a little loose coming off at turn number two. Kenny Gates nowhere to go in that one as Josh Coonrad gets right into the back of him as well as that would bring out the yellow for the first time. Off the race, our cousin Luke going to take control once again as the manimal Nick Stone working it up on the top side trying to get by Dumbluski for position up off of turn number two as they file down the back straightaway. Side-by-side -side battle for the runner-up position as Stone gets way up to the top side, almost cracks the wall the first time, does crack the wall the second time and loses a number of positions as a number of cars get by him down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, Dumbluski trying to battle with the 2H of Horning for the race lead down into the short shoot and past the Cow Palace as they work up off a turn number three and four, but the 2H holding on strong to the inside lane as he would take home off a turn number four, and then he would work his way off the corner and pick up the win in twin 20 number one as the STR car goes to the front. Feature number two, we see Justin Knight take the early race lead in the 81 machine, and here comes Cousin Luke lurking up on the inside. The Wild Twing, Frank Twing in there as well, working his way on the inside lane, trying to get some moves, working, but this one all Cousin Luke early and often as he move into the number two spot very quickly and try to run down the 81 machine that was out front as they worked their way down the front stretch and now the back stretch. Here's the 2H trying to push to the inside. He take that spot away, working him up through turn number three and four. Meanwhile, the 7 of Dombluski right there with Knight as Knight gets a little loose for a second. Gus Hallner and the 27 of Nick Stone lurking off the corner. But deja vu all over again, folks, as Cousin Luke Horning picks up the win in feature number two. To the Sportsman Division, Brian Calabrese going to drag race the 10 of Tim Hartman Jr. down the front straightaway, but it wasn't going to last long as the 10% going to work him up off a turn number two and he would be your race leader as they dive down the back straightaway as he would pull out ahead on that outside lane with the momentum. 
Hartman going to look to make the move as Calabresi holding on for a split second, but it would be Hartman to take over as cars working their way up. Yeah, that's the one J. A Rocky Warner already up into the top five. Uh, this one as Hartman continues to lead as he would get by Ray Zemkin for position up off a of turn number four and look to set his sights on the cars in front of him trying to chase down that 10% machine of Hartman. This could be the break Rocky needed as the caution will come out for the 18 of Tony Ferrone up in turn number two and off the restart. Here's Rocky pushing it up off the cushion, dusting it off sideways in that 1J machine as the Johnstown, New York driver looks to barrel it off at turn number two and down the back stretch. He would have the momentum as they call him the best in the game for a reason. Rocky Warner working the outside lane, no problem. But Hartman going to try to slide back in front of him off at turn number four. He keep it rolling, but not for long. Is Rocky going to switch lanes this time through turn number three and four? That time he keep the momentum rolling. Pull a Bobby Chalmers-esque slide job up off of turn number four that time and bring him down the front stretch as your new race leader coming to the white flag. What a battle by Rocky Warner as he would hold on off at of turn number four and pick up the win out at the Fonda Speedway in the Sportsman. To the modified feature we go as Jimmy Davis would lead the field in the green in the number 34 machine as they power him down the front straightaway. Pep Karate right there in tow in the 21P machine as they fight their way up in the early going. Ronnie Johnson with a great run trying to work around the one of Darwin Green down the back straightaway as DRG looks to hold him off. Barron in front of them trying to move his way up through the field as well as he would start clicking him off one by one here in the early going already into the top five. Karate working it down off the outside lane as he would get by Pangman for position, working his way down the back stretch and into the short shoot. Bobby Barron going to follow. Josh Hohen forced right there as well. Up off a of turn number two is the double zero trying to reign supreme. Down the back straight away, looking to make something happen. Meanwhile, catching Davis would be the double zero on the Palmas Service Center car number double zero machine is Varon going to make it look easy through turn number three and four new race leader as Bobby Varon has now gone to the front and after the bad luck at Brewerton a couple of weeks ago you can imagine he was chopping at the bit as the caution will come out for the 6-H of Hohen Force. Varon would take control again off of the restart but Pep Karate will be right there to try to meet him here in the final nine laps of this feature event as the double zero worked his way up off of turn number two he'd keep the momentum rolling down the back stretch Karate trying to battle back on the outside a little bit harder but off a of turn number three and four, Bobby Varon still trying to hold on as he would bring it off the corner still as your race leader, and you weren't touching him as this one. As ladies and gentlemen, it's Varon time. Bobby Varon picks up his first win of the season at Fonda. That'll do it for this episode of Quick Time. A special thanks goes out to sponsors at the Flat Companies, Canon Auto Supply, Flower Shells Auto Body and Restoration, Crane's Outdoor Power Equipment, Tom Saban, Bobco Media, and Thomas Productions. I'm Mike Warren. We'll see you next time at the races.